Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little different because I'm gonna do some storytelling and tell you about how we got stuck in the crazy superstorm Yuri last week in Texas unexpectedly. Pregnant, two kids, no power, the whole vibe. I'm gonna tell you all about it. If this is the first time watching me, hello, my name is Julie. I'm an occupational therapist and I have two little kids, age five and three, and I'm pregnant with my third child. And we decided to go to Texas. Out of all the times we could have, we went last week during the craziest storm that they have seen in a generation, in a hundred years. No one that we had met had ever experienced weather like this. So I wanted to tell you about my experience, how we got through it all, what ended up happening and yeah, just share with you guys. I usually post a lot of content around organization, minimalism, simple living, how to get your home in order so that you can live the life of your dreams. For example, go on trips and things like that. So if you do need more support, make sure that you download my free three day mini course and get your name on the Organized Mom signature course. Get your name on that wait list so that you can be notified as soon as this course goes live. I am so excited to be able to get to know you guys better in there. So make sure you check out all the links down below and let's get into the video. So let me back up. I know that there's gonna be a lot of controversy around traveling during a pandemic. Never mind pregnant, never mind to a high risk state because let's be honest, every, almost every state and country now in the world, if you look at the CDC list, is considered a level two, level three, high risk. Just don't do it. So I just wanna preface this by saying that it is not illegal or forbidden to travel within the United States, but I would say the vibe is that it is probably frowned upon. I just wanna explain myself. Everybody needs to make individual decisions regarding their own safety and risks for themselves and for their family and for other people. And the reason why we decided to travel when we did was because we are planning to move to Austin, Texas. But we have never been there. And it just seemed like, you know, if we're gonna move somewhere and make such a big change, although let's be real, we've done bigger changes. We needed to go and see what it was like. And Texas is actually very relaxed in terms of travel restrictions. We had a really great time in the beginning, at least of our trip where people were normal, kind. We didn't really interact with anybody. We rented an Airbnb, so we literally like didn't have to see anybody else. It wasn't like we were in a hotel interacting with people. Uh, you can just really like get on a plane, which by the way, is actually very safe. More the airport, that would be your concern. So as long as you're socially distancing and wearing a mask, washing your hands, all that kind of stuff, you should be fine. But getting on a plane is very safe because they recycle the air all the time. So we literally, you know, we got on the plane and we landed, we got our rental car and we drove to our Airbnb for the next, what we thought was gonna be four or five, four days, right? We were only going for four days. We are going for a long weekend so that our kids wouldn't have to miss too much school because you have to quarantine when you come back. And, you know, we, we just needed to go and see what this was like with the intention that we plan to move in the summer. It just seemed like now is the time while we can, as I said before, pregnant with third baby, have about three months left and I don't really wanna travel and I wouldn't have traveled. Uh, during this time had we not been planning to move. There's just some things that you have to weigh up for yourself and your family that really just, you have to make up your own mind and we felt like we were willing to take the risk. I discussed it with my midwife and it's just something, you know, I needed to take precautions as just like everybody else. And you know, another whole video and if I can go into this if you guys want me to, but there's so much fear around this virus and that is just as devastating on our mental health as the virus itself. So that's another whole thing. So we got there and we had expected pretty warm weather. You know, I hadn't packed the kids gloves and hats and snow gear or anything like that because it's Texas, man. It's supposed to be hot as heck. You know, as the days got closer towards our trip, we were tracking the weather and it was like getting a little cold, but 
you know, we're in, we're committed, we're, we're doing this. We gotta do it now, it's now or never. I don't think anyone could have anticipated what actually ended up happening. It was fine the first sort of three days, but it was cold. We went to the park and we were the only people there. I mean, I was freezing. And then, you know, it started becoming clear that the weather was gonna get worse. They were projecting snow. And I'll explain also how that impacts everything. And I must also say that we traveled with a, with a group of friends, another family with two children that are kind of in our little pod and we, you know, trust one another and because they are also considering moving to Texas. So we all went together and we stayed in a big house. We had now four adults and four little children, five and under in this home. And it became increasingly clear that it was unsafe to drive. And with the snow, there was a lot of ice on the road, black ice, and they were warning us not to drive. So after about Saturday, once it got to Sunday, we weren't driving anymore. And the whole purpose of this trip was to go to different neighborhoods, to drive around, get a feel for things, you know, just see how the people are and all this kind of stuff. And we managed to do a little bit of that on the Friday and the Saturday, but by Sunday it became clear that this was not safe. What was also crazy was that we could see out of our window where, the, where we were staying, there was a hill, and it had now been snowed on, cars just sliding down and freaking crashing. It was unbelievable. And one instance was where a lady, I don't know why she did this, but she got out of her car. Maybe she thought it was gonna just roll down the hill and she wanted to not be a part of it. But she got out of her car, walked around and slipped and then another car came down the road and crashed into her car. And she managed to move out of the way in the nick of time. Otherwise her car would have driven over her, if you know what I mean. We could just see this all happening outside our house. Because as I said, Texas is not used to this kind of weather and Austin does not have snow plows or salt or any kind of things that you need for blizzard conditions when it comes to driving. <laughs> the other problem was that we were starting to run out of food. There's eight people, four little kids, you know, we can't order food and we can't go out to get food. But things were okay for the moment. We got creative, we had some like pasta and stuff and because it wasn't our house, you know, we were renting it, there's nothing there except whatever you bring into the house, right? Into the home. It's definitely given me a new perspective on emergency preparedness, I will say. I have never experienced in the 10 or 11 years that I have lived in the United States, I've lived in Chicago and I've lived in New York. I have never experienced a power outage, ever. It's, which is mind blowing to me, especially coming from South Africa. Any South Africans out there, let me know. I grew up with power outages as a child. It like wasn't a big deal. Um, and the power would come back on after a few hours and you know, and then obviously load shedding is a whole separate thing where they actually are planning to put off the power. And so you're more prepared. But something about Texas is that they're not on the national grid. They have their own power. And I guess this is where it uh, didn't go so well for them. So we get to, let's say Sunday, we're like, we're okay on food, but you know, it's not great. Monday, okay, it's becoming increasingly dangerous. Nothing is really open. They closed the airport. So now Monday, we're supposed to come home to New York and the airport, you know, we get a notification. Okay, your flight is, delayed and then your flight is totally canceled. Okay, great. And then the airport has closed. Now, let me know where you are, if your airport has ever closed, but I'm pretty sure JFK in New York has never closed or maybe during September 11th, maybe during Hurricane Sandy, I'd have to look it up. But I mean, even if flights are canceled or delayed, it never closes because New York can deal with this kind of weather. It's, it's common for it. It's a smaller airport, like it's closed. I don't want to fly if it's not safe. Right? And I think for them more, it wasn't so much the flying, it was the fact that all of their staff can't get to the airport because they can't drive there. It's not, the roads are not safe. By Tuesday, we don't have any more food. There's eight people, it's a lot of, and we're stuck, it's stuck, it's stuck inside. There's nothing else to do but eat. But the point being, we weren't going out and eating, so we were, rely, we were cooking all our meals at home. So on Tuesday, we still have power. We're understanding now that other parts of the country are starting to lose power and water. I think that started to start around Sunday, Monday. I was just, 
just beyond grateful that we had power and water. I was like, you know what? We have heat. It is freezing outside. It was like 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like, I'd have to find out, negative five, negative nine degrees Celsius, but we're nice and toasty and warm inside. We have heat, we're good. So myself and our friend, we decided we'll go to the grocery store and we'll just, you know, we'll just get supplies, a few things. Not really thinking much of it. Mm. Also, not being prepared to stay outside and wait in freezing temperatures. Now, I took insulated socks for granted, but we went because now my husband and my friend's wife, they needed to be working. They were supposed to be working. This is now a working day. Obviously, things are a little different, but they still have power, they still have Wi Fi. So it's like, you know, we're gonna continue working. Yeah, we didn't go back when we were supposed to. We were supposed to be home already, but we're waiting for the airport to open. Hopefully we can fly back on Wednesday. We're waiting to hear. So we go to the local grocery store and we waited, I kid you not, for two and a half hours in a line to be let into the grocery store. Unbelievable. I've never experienced that either. It was freezing. My feet were basically frozen solid. I felt like my toes were going to fall off. At one point, we had actually debated walking over there because it wasn't that far. Thank goodness we took our car, even though like the roads were a little bit better now. Um, but it was still not like you still don't want to be driving far, but like we had to get food for everybody. Uh, it was unreal. So at one point, I think I was like 90 minutes in waiting. I was like, please, can I just go wait in the car? Because my feet are frozen. I don't have the right shoes. I had boots, but they're not insulated. And when you're standing on packed ice and snow for that long, you know, like I'm gonna get frostbite over here. Never mind the fact that I needed a pee like, because I need a pee like every hour, but I kind of just put that out of my mind. Uh, the focus was to go and get food, but they were only letting five people in at a time so that they could manage, you know, with the cashiers, checking people out. And I think also to protect the store against like looting or people going crazy and grabbing stuff and you just don't know how it's gonna be. So I think they did a really good job, all things considered. But by the time we got in there, a lot of like the essential stuff had kind of been taken, uh, like eggs and bread and milk and everything. But we were still able to get a lot of stuff. We, you know, we got snacks. I got food that I probably wouldn't normally buy because I was like, you know, if ever there was a time, we didn't know what we were gonna get in there. So I just kind of grabbed things. The other thing was, as I said, we had four little kids and we had no toys for them. And usually I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know, like we're gonna be creative. We had always intended that we were gonna go out. We were gonna go to playgrounds. We we're gonna be driving around. Plus we only brought hand luggage with us. I had no space to bring toys. I had one book for each kid and like their lovies. And basically that was it. Always assume that if you forget something on a trip, you could go and buy it. But when you literally are trapped in your house and it's unsafe to drive, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> so we really got creative. At one point we were bringing snow into the house and making little like snow castles and things like that. We were cutting up Trader Joe's bags to make shapes. I mean, I was really just pulling out all the stops that I could using kitchen equipment for them. But this is all while we still had power. It was just unfortunate they were stuck inside. We didn't have warm clothes for them, so they couldn't go outside. It was actually not safe for them. So now we get to Tuesday. We go and wait in the in the line for two and a half hours. Eventually we get let into the grocery store. It's a great day. We buy a lot of stuff. Thank goodness. Not really knowing obviously what the future holds. Then we drive home very precariously. By the time we get home, it's three o'clock. The kids haven't really eaten, but I had bought them crayons and some books and paper to play with. And you swear that it was Christmas, which was just very sweet. And they they didn't even seem that interested in food, even though they really hadn't eaten anything all day. Uh, and they were so into drawing and just kind of doing their own little school version. I called it the school of life because now they're missing school and I'm just, oh, uh, okay. But it's fine, we're all safe. You have to put it in perspective. We're all safe, we're all healthy, we're together. We have power, we have heat, we have water. We're like a million times more fortunate than a lot of people that are going through something similar right now. Then we get to Wednesday morning and you know, everything's fine and normal, lights are on and then boom, lights go out at probably I think it was about 9 a.m. Lights out, heat out, not prepared. Had I known all this was gonna happen, one thing that I know that was really frustrating to me was that our sink had a garbage disposal 
element and it hadn't been fully cleared because you don't anticipate that so the sink wasn't draining so even to wash dishes like the water would just pile up in this disgusting oily mess it's just things you take for granted right um we had had a full like dishwasher load from the night before from dinner that we hadn't done so now we have all these dishes that we don't know how long they're gonna sit there for and this kind of stuff bothers me so <laughs> i was like how am i gonna do this then they're advising that you boil the water before you drink it because just to make extra you know make sure we we're just not prepared we didn't have bottled water it was funny because when we were grocery shopping they had said to us hey only one drum of propane per family luckily we don't need the propane well i mean luckily we didn't in the end but it came close to that so then what we found ourselves this is now wednesday it's freezing outside i think it was snowing again it was terrible and obviously everyone needs to work but now they can't because there's no wi-fi we're charging our phones in the car because luckily that still works it was intense and i think the worst part of it is like not knowing when the power can come back on so for me mentally it's like if you were running a marathon you know that it's going to end at 26 miles uh, but for this, this could have gone on for we don't even know. And we couldn't leave either because we couldn't, you know, there's no flights and it's not safe. And the kicker also was that we needed to fly back to New York and they were expecting really severe weather the Thursday and the Friday. They closed schools and things. <laughs> we were just kind of stuck with no, with no heat and no power. And luckily we found a fire lighter for the barbecue outside because we had no matches because again, not our house, not prepared. And that worked and we could use the gas on the stove to boil water and to cook food. Otherwise we would have been in such trouble. The other ironic thing is that obviously the fridge starts to defrost and doesn't work. The house was very cold. When we finally got the thermostat back on again, it was 45 degrees inside, which is about seven degrees Celsius, which is cold. Like that's like living in a fridge. Um, we eventually put all of our food outside in like a homemade fridge. And luck, I mean, that was the irony was that we needed it to be cold outside so that our food didn't go bad. But because it was so cold outside, we were freezing inside. So it was just like kind of, you know, a catch 22. But we managed to salvage a lot of the food. We didn't really have to throw any out, which was kind of amazing. We even got to keep the ice cream. We don't know what's happening. We're like looking online to see. And now everybody's learning about how energy and power works in Texas and why we don't have any power. And that's because they're not connected to the national grid it was just intense um and we also were aware of other people who hadn't had power or water since say monday and now we're on to wednesday or sunday you know so it's hard to really be complaining about this because it could be so much worse and that's something i took from this experience it could always be worse and there are always things to be grateful for and at least in those first few days mentally i was just like you know what we still have water i'm grateful for that we're all healthy nothing you know we can't there's nothing that we can't bounce back from we will figure this out they're gonna get us power back but not knowing obviously wears you down but it's really important to just mentally not dissolve and i feel like the kids had a great time. They actually slept way better. I didn't sleep very well. My husband didn't sleep very well because we were just, you know, just like worried about things and it is freezing and you know, we can't shower because it's too cold. Well, there's no hot water obviously, but it does mentally wear down on you. But the important thing is if you do find yourself in a crisis like this, that you have to just mentally look for the hope, look for the good in everything. We had each other, we had company, our children had company. We were super grateful for all of those things and it helped us get through those few days. So then we go through Wednesday, no power. We go through Thursday, no power. And then Thursday night, I think around nine or 10 p.m. It was late. Uh, we saw the <laughs> electricity trucks coming to our little area and at this point the neighbors across the way from us had power and the neighbors behind us i think or like the street down from us had power and we were just like what is going on and basically what had happened actually that wednesday morning that we lost power around 5 a.m um there was a massive explosion almost like an alien landing and what had happened was one of the i don't even know what you would call it like the transistors or something had exploded but we lost power for like five minutes and then it was restored. So at the time we didn't think any of 
didn't think anything of it. I think my husband had got up to go to the bathroom, saw this massive flash and heard this crack and then was like, hmm, that's odd. Are we being abducted? And then kind of didn't think anything of it. And because of that, I think we'd actually had damage to the power lines versus the city switching off the power to prevent an out like a complete outage or overload on the grid and then being able to just switch it back on. So our power had to be actually repaired or like the infrastructure had to be repaired. And the guys had to come and like fix it. And I just I just thought I was just so grateful for these men. It's freezing. It's dark. It's late at night. And they worked the whole night to fix. And then we saw the tree cutting companies, a lot of vegetation and there were a lot of trees and we were staying near a river and there were trees. And so they're in this like river trying to fix these trees and they had to cut down trees in order to like, remove them from the power lines. I mean, it's a whole thing. And like, God bless those people because they saved our lives. <laughs> I don't think any of us, any of the adults really slept on Thursday because we were like waiting for the power to come on. There's like this anticipation, like it's Christmas that the lights are just gonna pop on at any moment and that didn't happen. So we all wake up, say seven o'clock, or we get out of bed at seven o'clock and you know, we're still like freezing and now it's day three of this and we're just like, hmm. My sense of humor, it's gone. It's rolled down the street. I don't know where it is. By that point, I think I was becoming a little bit discouraged and I was kind of losing it a bit. And like in retrospect, it was only three days, but it was just getting mentally too much. And I think not having any sleep was an issue um, and having to, boil water, then trying to wash dishes, then waiting for it to drain. It was just, you know, it was a lot of hard work um, that we spent, you know, those two or three days trying to just keep the house, like just survive, you know, and keep the house going, keep everybody fed with the food that we had, get creative, all this kind of stuff stuck inside. The kids were amazing. They mostly like played together really well. They built all sorts of things, just doing amazing things. And I was like super impressed. It was a really incredible thing to watch them uh, be creative and not be phased and I think I think also you know even though we were feeling a little stressed inside I think we kept the atmosphere fairly calm and that obviously had an impact on the children there was a guy up on a pole doing something for like about an hour and eventually he did flick some switch and the power came back on and we like went crazy we had a party it was just amazing i was just like okay what do we do first and we had fantasized like what will we do first when the power comes on like do you take a shower do you wash your clothes do you wash dishes do you make yourself like a cup of tea like oh cup of coffee or something i even invented some drip coffee which i don't even drink hot water or boiling water over a filter with a sieve you know and it was just it was a crazy time um what would you do if you didn't have power for a few days and the light suddenly came back on let me know we also debated amongst us would you rather rather have water or heat or heat or lights uh, let me know what you would rather have in retrospect i would would have heat and water if I could. I, I think having water is very important. So I'd probably have water over electricity. So then on Friday, the lights came back on and it was just like, oh, amazing. And we could see that the weather was starting to warm up. It was still pretty cold. It was probably like in the thirties, uh, but we now had heat. So that was amazing. And we just got about to kind of like getting back online. People had to work and you know, cleaning up the house. I did so many loads of laundry, like way too many probably, but I just, felt like, I don't know if these lights are gonna go off again, you know? So we did all our laundry, we changed the sheets. We'd also already been there for like over a week. So, you know, we like washed the towels and things like that. It's just, we had never planned to be there for so long. We were only supposed to be there for four days. It was an interesting experience. And then we really tried to make the most of our time in Austin because the whole point was to see the city. So by Friday, the weather was much better and we were able to start driving around a little bit more. We went to a park on Saturday. We went to like an outdoor Creek, drove around a few neighborhoods. It was really, really nice. We just kind of tried to have a bit of a vacation a little bit, you know? And then on Sunday, it was nuts. We were able to actually swim in the pool at the house we were staying at, which was crazy. The pool was heated and yeah, it was just like the crazy polar opposite of this like blizzard, no power to be able to swim in a pool in February. It just blows my mind. So yeah, and then we were able to drive to the airport, return our rental cars, get on a plane and fly back to New York as if like nothing happened. So let me know if you've ever had an experience like this before and how you handled it. 
I think being mentally strong is really the key, even though it was it was a hard, it was a challenge for sure. I'm just proud of everybody that like got through it all and I'm so grateful to everybody that helped us get power back on and everybody that helped, you know, we were watching all these car accidents. The police were kind of amazing. They were there so soon. Even on the Saturday, once we had power, someone else drove into a pole and turned the pole this way. They had it repaired and cleaned up and replaced you know with like in less than 12 hours it was really amazing so i am really grateful for the experience and you know the number one question i get is like well are you still going to move to texas are you still going to move to austin and honestly like this doesn't change my opinion if anything it deepens my affection for the city because so many people had a really tough time and people really pulled together to help everybody and there's still so many people struggling so if you can donate or spend any time or spare anything for you know the cause i will leave some donation areas down below that you can go and look at but yeah hopefully you guys will see us there soon and i can make lots of moving videos and how i move as a minimalist and what i'm going to actually pack and take and all this kind of stuff yeah if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and subscribe click that notification bell give this video a big thumbs up and i can't wait to see you in my next one with lights and heat and water and all those basics bye